Hello. July is macro month here at Camera Lessons Online, and today we're going to be talking about how macro imagery and proximity affect depth of field more than your aperture. Here we go. So not too long ago, I did a video about how the proximity to uh, what you're shooting and the focal length uh, are significant contributors to depth of field and they can be uh, particularly powerful when it comes to uh, shooting something not necessarily at f1.8 but still being able to get a shallow depth of field and I did that with an 85 millimeter and 135 millimeter respectively and showed that at the same distance at the same aperture they produce totally different depths of field. Well we're doing macro imagery this month so today we're going to be talking about how the way we shoot macro affects depth of field. Uh, first, of course, everything we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online. Uh, it's the website, that's the business. We've got a four-hour introduction to photography course on there. We have books on a variety of topics. One of them is macro photography. Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, there are three significant factors to depth of field. Proximity, focal length, and aperture. And we're accustomed to thinking about aperture as the significant control over depth of field. You open it, you get a shallower depth of field. You stop down, you get a longer depth of field. Well, macro shooting is a little bit different. When we are significantly close to our subjects, as we are when we approach the one-to-one -one ratio, we start getting shallow depth of field pretty much independent of aperture. So uh, first, I want to show you just you know an image or two shot at f8, but approaching the one-to-one -one ratio. So as you can see, when we're shooting uh, macro imagery, if you're up close to a subject, you are going to get shallow depth of field pretty much no matter what you do. And uh, that's not to say that aperture has no effective depth of field. So let's take a look at something here, and I'm going to use a uh, I'm going to use a tape measure for this. Uh, here's a shot, and these are in manual focus, so focus point tripod are not moving. Here's a shot at f 2.8, and now we're going to be looking at uh, f8. And yes, there's a depth of field difference. Of course there is. But you can start to see it go out of focus within about an inch uh, as we are close to the one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going from basically nothing to about an inch. And that's just not a significant amount because when we start actually shooting at f8 up close, we start getting really shallow depth of field even if we're stopped down. And for us to call something a long depth of field shot, I think we need it to be a little bit longer than what we're getting. So how do we start getting longer depth of field? It's not gonna be through aperture. You can either step farther back, but that ruins the framing of a depth of field shot, uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a macro shot, sorry. Or you can focus stack. Now focus stacking deserves its own video, so we're gonna do that um, uh, next week. But right now I just want to point out just an understanding that three things affect up the field, your aperture, your proximity, and your focal length. When we are up close to our subjects, we get a shallow depth of field almost independent of the aperture we shoot at because most of your macro lenses are also slightly telephoto. I'm shooting with a 90 millimeter here. Uh, Nikon's most popular um, macro lenses are a 60 millimeter and a 105, and Canon has two different 100 millimeter uh, macro lenses. So we tend to be pretty, uh, pretty telephoto. So that's part one, understanding why you get shallow depth of field when shooting macro independent of aperture. And we're going to take a look at focus, focus stacking in next week's video. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next time. And of course, if you liked it, give us a like and a subscribe. Of course, I appreciate it. Take care and have fun.